Earlier I said that there are two possibilities. Either you think Descartes' standard is a good standard or you don't. If you think Descartes' standard is a good standard, well, you doesn't look like you know that you're not in the matrix or any of the skeptical hypotheses. All right, but what happens if you reject the standard? Um, it's not as if there's something easy happening here either. If you reject the standard, then there's some level of doubt that's acceptable in order for you to have knowledge. And whenever there's some level of doubt, there's always the possibility that you can know something that's false. Know something that's false. Um, how would, uh, <laughs> how do you do that? Uh, what level is, it? I mean, it's, it's really obvious in cases where it's just obviously false, right? Or obviously a, a, a problem that you think, oh, well, you don't know that. But people speak this way, don't they, right? They buy the lottery ticket and they say, well, I know I'm gonna win this time. It's like, well, I don't think you do because the chances are radically against you, <laughs> really against you that you're gonna win. You've got no particular evidence that you have the winning lottery ticket. Um, and you know, these situations like, you don't know. Even if it happens to be true, right? Suppose they do win the lottery. First, you're probably going to apologize and ask for a few thousand bucks, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, even if they happen to win, you think, well, you just got lucky, right? You just got lucky in that belief. Uh, you didn't know you were going to win. You just happened to win. You got no justification, no credibility, no evidence for that. Well, so in those really obvious cases, it's easy to see that, you know, uh, a you know, high level of doubt is not acceptable, but how far can you lower it and you still know things? I mean, like I said, <clears throat> um, it's not as if you know, human uh, intuition and thought has solved a lot of these problems through the centuries. Right? We, we're still asking the question of what it means to exist. We're still coming up with answers. Many people argue we're just using the same answers over and over again. Sometimes we realize that sometimes we don't. There's no non-controversial answer for the question what you know? What accounts for your continued existence? I mean, they all have deep problems. They all have issues that you know we just kind of hope would go away, but don't. Uh, we look even answering something like: Is everything composed of the finite or is it composed of the infinite? Either way, it seems like there's a deep problem that seems to really cast doubt in our ability to answer these questions. And if it does, you know, it's kind of like that lottery ticket. Do we just happen upon the right belief? Sure seems like, I mean, suppose the atomists are right. Sure seems like they just got lucky. Suppose Andy Samander's right. Looks like he just got lucky. You know, we can keep on going down the list. If it really is that sort of situation, if you know, we just happen to be right, but it could have just as easily been wrong, and it's about this wide range of beliefs, if you happen to have a true belief and you just happen to be lucky? Is that really knowledge? Hmm. So, we, you know, it's like there's two possibilities here. Either you accept Descartes' standard, in which case you don't know that the table exists, um, or what? If you happen to be right, you got lucky?